Hello everybody, welcome back to the uh, Lost World um, Let's Play. At this part, it's just going to be myself and Chris, because uh, Stephen had finally had enough and decided life was too short to waste his time. <laughs> Speaking of a Sonic Lost World, I wish we agreed with him. And Sky hasn't played the game, so he was like, I have better things to do, so I'm going to do that. So uh, me and Chris, we're going to try and make this a bit more of a uh, analytical commentary, as opposed to the last two parts, we were just screaming and crying about how much we hate this game and Chris why did you why did you start by just walking directly into that pool um I don't remember I was probably showing off that shields vanish once you get hit you mean like in every other Sonic game known to man yeah nice now I forget you recorded this in version 3 was it yes see if you recorded this in version 4 we'd be hearing the drill sound effect now uh, actually, we'd be hearing the underwater drill sound effect, because in this game, there's 3D drill, which controls like butt. Yeah, it kind of looks bad. I, I was genuinely trying to figure out what's up with that, because I've never found an actual point to doing that other than rings and life. Wives. I'll be honest, yeah, I'll be honest with you, like, I don't... The, the, the wisps in this game just feel shoehorned in. Mm -hmm. Like, I would imagine, like, probably like midway through production... Someone, maybe Izuku, was just like, people like the Wisps, let's add them in. And everyone's like, we, why? We've already designed the game, we can't just shove them in now. Too bad. Okay. Too b <laughs> also, well, like speaking of, what is the point of these things? <laughs> um, what are they? Fun. The mini me mechs which you can use to destroy stuff and go even slower than normal. There's no alternate path that they get. They're just... <laughs> They're just really dumb, angry birds. Do they destroy anything? Can they help you do anything extra? I guess you don't have to choose kick or homing attack on enemies. You can just run over them. I figured you would use them to go into these water spouts and they'd shoot you off to a hidden path, but it just acts like an invisible wall and you can't run into it. I, I don't get it. I also don't get this, but it looks cool. This is, this is just a place to farm for rings. Heck yeah. I don't mind things like this. Like, things like this don't bother me, because, like, they're just there just to, you know, give you rings and stuff, but... Yeah, it's weird, because, like, in, in colors, like, um, you don't need the wisps, obviously, to, um, complete the game, but, like, the levels were designed around them. Mm -hmm. You know, well, 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 the levels were designed with them in mind. A lot of the times with these ones, it just feels like, you know, here's a... And a lot of the wisps just do weird stuff. Like rhythm, like, um, which we'll get to. Like, rhythm, eagle, um, you know... Bomb, like a lot of them, just like, why are you here? Asteroid is just like that is the most worthless thing in the world. <laughs> also, I'm an asshole. <laughs> hey, not everyone deserves to be saved, all right? Then flickies don't, don't deserve it. They know what they did. So crabs, <laughs> you have to kick and then homing attack, which is, I guess, their excuse for justifying the kick system. But we went over that. It just still gets to me. Yeah, it's like, a lot of the things, like, in terms of Lost World, kind of like with something like, maybe say Heroes, like, a lot of the designs on paper sound, like, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and the draw distance on those palm trees was fantastic. <laughs> um, I just, it's weird, because, like, a lot of things, like, you know, we're going to give Sonic a parkour system, he can run up walls and up trees and stuff, which you haven't really been able to do, and this is a pre-scripted event, which is, you know, all four, and we're going to, you know, give him some new moves like a powerful kick attack which can help defeat you know certain enemies that are more powerful that the uh, thing can't we're bringing back the spin dash you know fans love the spin dash we're bringing that back but just in execution it's just like yeah uh, I was going to say a homing attack kick thing would have been a cool way to help make the combat anything other than jump into enemy but I really can't think of how you logically implement that to a player who thinks okay I need to kick here as opposed to I guess I'll try both and die which it doesn't work. It's weird because, like, um, you know, we're, we're led to believe that you use the kick as more powerful than the homing attack. There's so many times where you're shown that, but like, you get the things like the um, the deadly six, and like the kick like never works on them. I so it's like, never thought to try uh, kicking them. Actually, my first instinct was homing attack because that's what Sonic does. Now this section is uh, just like this is a great place to farm for lives because uh, it's also a great place to die and lose your lives because <laughs> you get disoriented from the background. The, yeah, the draw distance. We didn't, like, in term we didn't get to talk mm. about it much in the first part, but I really don't like the cloud gameplay. It's just really awkward, if you ask me. The, the cloud game, because the thing is, like, the way the, 
the camera does this annoying thing where it shifts from an overhead to like behind the back view. If it like if because sometimes when you're jumping from small clouds, that camera perspective change can screw you up. Yeah. Like I think it would have been a lot better if, if say the the camera just stayed above you automatically for cloud sections. Yeah, because like this, it just looks like the planet's breathing like really heavily. <laughs> The planet's a bit overweight, it's having a slight heart attack, but we're going to take these lives and be on our merry way. And that's the end of level one. Yeah. <laughs> now, like, in terms of in terms of tropical coast, I mean, this is like, to me, it just feels like Windy Hill, just with some more water in it. Yeah, it's a pretty level. I think it's one of the stages that really works with the visual thing they went for, but... I don't think it's too distinctive from Wendy Hill. No. My thing is, like, I like the fact that I think this cutscene should have played before the first level. Because, like, did, did Eggman, Orbo, and Cubot just follow Sonic through that level? Or did, like, Sonic come back and meet them? Uh, Eggman, since he's faster than Sonic, he actually <laughs> ran a far ahead. He's just taking a break, and Sonic <laughs> and Tails caught up to him. Now, this, this would have been a nice point for them to explain... You know what? How Eggman knew about the conch, or like yeah. explain some more stuff about the about the Zeti. But um, well, instead, let's just have everyone joke around. Yeah, I wish it like I I really enjoy Roger Craig Smith's delivery, but the way he says "get things under control" makes it sound like he's he's responding <laughs> to something Eggman said. But Eggman doesn't say that phrase, so like it's a really odd way for him to be like under control. It's like okay, okay, bye. And that, to me, like, um, a lot of people did felt that the um, writing in colors was, like, really kind of uh, Saturday morning and kiddie. I never found that myself personally, but there were a few sections in this in this game where uh, the writing is, like, that line where, like, if you think Eggman's a bonehead, raise your hand. And I'm like, eh, not really. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I, I think they made up for it with Eggman's, I didn't raise my hand, though. Oh, yeah, like, like Mike Pollock has the best, like... Like everything backwards. in this like, game yeah <laughs> it's weird because like the writing is kitty but you get you get like odd lines of dialogue like I hope they eat you alive it's <laughs> just like okay fair enough oh, so like they, this guy's this totally something... kung fu panda uh, like he has a projector why doesn't he just throw that at Sonic from a mile away and kill him no something that always kind of confused me in terms of the deadly six and he has he has Jedi mind powers that's awesome like so Zavok is their leader, but Zik's their master. Like, who's like, and Zavok treats Zik like he's in charge. So why is everyone listening to Zavok for? Why isn't Zik in charge? I'm, I'm, I'm confused, Chris. Um, maybe Zik retired, but Zavok's a really bad leader. So he's like, oh, I guess I'll go in and make sure they're doing all right today. I love how the apple from like just no reason, it, no one's you. touched it. It's just like no, the apple just like. It's a suicidal apple. It just can't take life anymore. I will say I love the designs of the um, the the like animation of like when the um fruit falls into the blenders. Mm. And why did Eggman design metallic oranges for? He was hungry, man. <laughs> but so why Food would he make a metallic? Is all Eggman decisions. <laughs> but it's like um, I think this ha this is one of my favorite gimmicks in the game, and this is a like I don't. When I was borrowing Lost World from you, I didn't find myself replaying levels much, but this and a few levels in Sky Road I did go back and play once or twice. It's a pretty decent level. I mean, I can't remember any of it right now, but it's a pretty decent level. I just, I just, I really just remember the fruit aspect. It is kind of a nice little gimmick. Yeah. And the music's fairly funky. Now, what, what we've just heard is kind of uh, cliche, standard, old, wizened, you know, line spouted from a not amazingly written, like, old character. That's something, uh, I, I can't remember if we've gone into this, but, um, the Deadly Six, not the most original of, of characters, you know, but all of their, um, all of their personalities are incredibly one note, and they, you know, there's like, you know, there's the, the bland leader. There's the um, there's the, the crazy guy, the fat guy, the old guy, I think that's, the emo guy. Maybe that's and what the people girl. were getting at with the Saturday morning cartoon thing, with the Deadly Six, because they are kind of pretty Saturday morning cartoonish. With the exception of, of some of their dialogue, um, they wouldn't be too out of place in Adventures of Song the Hedgehog, you know. <laughs> 
maybe maybe tone down all of their references to murder, and they would fit quite well into, into that cartoon. Hey, Chris. Hey. What animal is that robot? Chicken. Oh, it's a cock. What are you talking about? Uh, oh. Oh. Idiot. All I know is I hate them. <laughs> yeah, they were always like the most one of the most annoying enemies from um, Sonic 3 and K. Despise them. Despise them. I believe you mean uh, Sonic and Knuckles. No, if you put them together as the way it's meant to be, it's Sonic 3 and K. Sure. <laughs> I always feel like I'm gonna fall off this level. It's weird, like in terms of its level, there's, there's a lot of things in Lost World which does things I don't understand why, like um, like watermelons you know, that ground pound and send out seismic waves. That makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah. My, uh, my thing is like, um, I maybe this is me, but I, I don't think Sonic level design does well, especially in 3D with incredibly night, um, tight, narrow corners like this. Yeah. With the possible, but the possible exception, and like, I expect this kind of level design in like a final level, you know. Like, like, you know, Eggman has this fortress that's, like, you know, really dickish to get across. I don't, like, I don't know, like... It's kind of, this kind of level design, this kind of perplexes me. I don't really understand it. Yeah. And about falling off, especially with those small platforms, I never really felt confident enough in Lost World's controls to say, yeah, I could make that. Whereas with something that's... like Adventure, I'd be like, well, this is no problem. It's, it's something that colors suffered from slightly. Mm-hmm. Where sometimes its double jump would sometimes mess you up, and you wouldn't like reach a place. But like, it, admittedly, that is a problem with colors. But like, it wasn't for me. It wasn't a game breaker. So many times in Lost World when I was playing it, I would just you know, it's weird because like you know, we we played Sonic games for a while, so we kind of understand how he like how he should play kind of thing. And there's so many times where I'm like, if this was a different Sonic game. Like, I'd make that jump. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the kind of. It's weird that in every Sonic game, they kind of slightly re like rechange his abilities in terms of like how high and f and fast and like how far he can jump and stuff. And sometimes going from one game directly to another can mess you up. Because I'd say his uh... adventure two to heroes really sticks out to me. Yeah, and like and his jump is pretty gimped in this. Like he's not he's not as a, as powerful as a jumper in, in Lost World as he is in say some of the previous games. Mm -hmm. And we've been over this before, but anytime you got a villain theme with a banjo, I'm all for. <laughs> there was a banjo in some other Sonic track in the last few years, but I can't remember it. I would say, like, um, Lost World doesn't have my... isn't one of my favorite soundtracks. Um, I don't think it's bad, but the Deadly Sixth, Sixth's theme is one of my favorite pieces of Sonic music from the last few games. Same. I think this theme is so good. I think the soundtrack just doesn't stand out too much as compared to other ones. It's very well produced, but it some tracks just don't pop the way they should. It's um it's weird because it's uh, the Tommy Ochini was the main sound director. He did pretty much all, all of the level tracks, with the exception of um, Sugar Lane. Mm -hmm. um, but like it, it, he he he's going for different styles, which I, I you know sometimes towards the end of say. Uh, it's inside like Shadow the Hedgehog, everything's just like kind of rock and metal and stuff. There's no real diversity. He goes for a lot of diversity in this soundtrack. There's you know, there's um there's some tracks that are kind of like more of a of like a pop rock mentality, there's some which are kind of slower, like some nice violin tracks and you know, in this world it's it's all like kind of just like um like funky like jazz and stuff. And but like it's it's weird because some of the melodies aren't that memorable. Yeah. I I really think he was just spread too thin. I'm not sure why they didn't have someone else like do half the game and then well they kind of did because um, one guy did like all the cutscene music and one well, guy I, I mean, uh, like, Tommy or Tim. oh in terms of levels yeah, yeah it's because yeah. that's what they usually do they're normally there's normally at least three or four um, I think the last time that happened was I think again it was in um, Shadow the Hedgehog June Snow did pretty much most of the level tracks which is mm. why I mean again um, kind of like this I like Shadow soundtrack you know but it's just not as memorable as say something as say SA1 Colors or Heroes I gotta say I wonder what convenience store he picked up all those donuts from. <laughs> yeah. Also, why didn't they put them in a bag? Oh, like a plastic bag? Case? Box? I don't know. Because because a paper bag is more environmentally friendly. Oh, of course. They were combating that with all those oil barrels in the first Tropical Zone <laughs> stage. <laughs> no, this is just this is just a plot to generations. <laughs> just stealing the color from the world. 
Does this mean I can go to Chemical Plant Zone next? I hope so. I want to know where the Deadly Six got all their nail polish from. Because, <laughs> like, all of them have, like, different, different kind of nails. <laughs> See, I was gonna, I was gonna go with um Zor. He seems more like the one who, <laughs> he, you know, it's a joint venture. They both work on it. Now, unlike um the level we're gonna see coming up in Lava Mountain, uh, this rail level makes sense in context of this world. Yeah, Sonic's dipping underwater for a bit, and you know this track is you know very what good. You said. I think most people, this is uh, most people's favorite, if not one of their favorites. Very, very relaxing mm-hmm. piece of music. It, I think it, it, it does go well with this, with the rail levels. Oh yeah, it's one of the few moments in Lost World that really kind of made me step back and go, "Oh, well, this isn't that bad at all." I see this level. You know, it's um, it's kind of. It's not so much that the level is designed well, but I really think like the music and the atmosphere gives it a kind of unique feel yes, to anything in the series. Yeah. Yeah, this this is a level, probably one of the only few in generation, in, sorry, in Lost World, rather. <laughs> I wish we were playing Generations. In Lost World, where, like, everything just meshes well. The level mm-hmm. design, the, uh, you know, the, as, as uh, Chris said, the aesthetics, the music, it just, you know, this is it's a pretty good level, you know? Yeah. Which is to say, you know, it's when we get to the second one, <laughs> all, that is for, all that is thrown out the window. But, you know, for... You know, at this point, you know, you know, grinding's become a staple since you know it's been in the franchise over ten years now. I'm used to grinding levels, and this is probably one of the uh, the better grinding levels mm-hmm. I've played in a Sonic game. And it's actually fun in this game as opposed to a certain other Sonic GameCube era game because the real controls actually work pretty decently. Well, yeah, most of the real controls were pretty bad. Um... You can make reliable jumps, things that work the way you expect them to. It's competent. This is I don't know I don't normally say this in terms of gameplay, but I think the grinding in Sonic games became better when they took control away from the player. Yeah, which is like weird. <laughs> yeah, which is because in, in SA two and Heroes you kind of had to like you could just kind of stand still and press B to like grind faster, but generally you could, you could like move you could like move your character how they were like standing on the on the rail, which could make you go faster or slower. Mm-hmm. It's horrible in Heroes. Heroes has the worst. Um, rail grinding, bar none. Uh, don't, don't it's, it's, <laughs> it's like Rail Canyon is not a fun level to play because those that, like if, if if they remade Heroes and gave Rail Canyon like the um the uh, colors or generations grinding mechanics, it'd be pretty it'd sweet. Probably be, it'd probably be a fun level, you know. And if but... they gave Casino Park the uh, generations pinball mechanics or at least made them halfway decent, then I could probably play Heroes and not hate myself. <laughs> or give them the freaking SA one. Pinball physics. Yeah. Because, you know, because, you know, Opelis is pretty, you know, works pretty well. Oh, Sonic Team. I guess something to point out here. Red red um, rails make you go slow. Because I didn't get that for a long time. I just thought, why am I going slow on these rails? Oh, red is slow, green is fast, silver's medium speed. Then it all clicked. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yes. Yes, you are. Damn, better look sweet while I stand here and watch everything go to shit. <laughs> sure, it's me, the fine freak Knuckles. <laughs> Nothing steals Knuckles' energy. <laughs> so, like, in terms of in terms of what the Amy and Knuckles just stand there, well, the in, when when the energy gets sucked out of the planet, like, is the energy getting s- <laughs> what a crappy thing to say? Stay safe while the entire world's <laughs> being sucked apart. Good job, Sonic. Dramatic. But like. In, in terms of, in terms of, because as we're seeing now, like the the world's being, you know, um, being turned into white space time. <laughs> but like, um, but like, do do living will living things get energy sucked out? Because again, so much of Lost World story just not um, explained. Later on, Sonic tries to contact Amy and Knuckles and can't. So unless it causes an energy interference, um, Amy and Knuckles dying is now canon. So, so basically, you're saying that Amy and Knuckles. Uh, you know, become statues that are all grey and they lose their colour. So yeah, that's what but... happens to them in Generations. This is the prequel to Generations. But if Sonic beats the level and then touches their statue, they come back to life. This So essentially, this game takes place before and after Generations. At some, during generations it happens at the same Sonic time. Leaves. I read it on a Sonic <laughs> 4 Episode 3 website. Now, we're touching something here we haven't seen yet. The uh, Carnival minigames. 
I love this music, man. Oh, yeah. I, this is one of my favorite music tracks in the entire game. It's it's annoyingly catchy. I'm glad the music is good because I don't always feel like the game mechanics are fair. You control the um, thing at the bottom there with the uh, stylus on the gamepad. Mm. You can see it makes a lot of very quick turns. The main issue is, even though they have an aura around them, you will lose sight of Sonic and Tails, and if they hit the four, um, you lose. The, what the, the thing that they did is that for some reason they made the flickies like twice as big as Sonic and Tails. Yeah, and there's all kinds of bright lights and fireworks and... And the problem is, is that there are blue and yellowish colored flickies. So like, they look like Sonic and Tails. And again, it's hard to find out. I will say though, the sound effect they make when they hit the floor is hilarious. It sounds like a corpse being dropped from a building. <laughs> Just like, poof, it's fantastic. I also love the detail of the carnival and kind of wish that was a level in this game that you could play through. Because it looks I know, cool. Right? I know, right? It's so good. <laughs> I, if we, um, we, we're recording this um, a, a little while after we did 1 and 2. Um, I can't remember, Chris, have we talked about the flicky mechanic? Um, we briefly touched on it, but they're basically sun medals, and you have to click certain amounts to beat the game. I think the final tally is like 7,000. Mm, it's they're not as obnoxious as the um, moon meadows or say the mineral grinding from Sonic Rush Adventure. Because <laughs> um, again, those the the circus caravans, as they're called, um, they're kind of they're perfect for this grinding for flickies. And normally, if you're like if if you're you know uh, smashing robots and and opening up um, flicky boxes capsules as you go along as you see them. You shouldn't have too much of a time. Like, I mean, I, when I did this, I only had to grind maybe once or twice in the entire game. Yeah, it's not as nearly as bad as Unleashed. It's forgivable here. It's it's just kind of like, in Unleashed it was annoying. In this, it's just... Well, like in, in Unleashed, it's kind of downright dickish at times. Because, mm -hmm. like, the amount of... In here, it's just slightly mildly annoying. Like, it, it may make you spend an extra five minutes collecting flickies. But apart from that, you know, it ain't going to be a trouble. Yeah. I will say, I think... Rocket is one of the few Wisp implementations that are actually um, better than the Colors counterpart. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because it's not just I'm pressing a button shooting up. It's I have to think about this. I have to aim. Where am I going to go? Stuff mm. like that. But sometimes, very rarely, you can get screwed over because you'll use Rocket and there's nowhere to Rocket to. So you have to Rocket out into basically dead space and die and try again, which is kind of dumb. Gameplay! Yeah, but as long as you hit a balloon or go towards a trail of ling rings, you're fine. Trail of wings. <laughs> that should be the newest Sonic game. Sonic and the Trail of Lings. <laughs> now, I've, I've, I've read um, things online where sections like these, this is... I mean, obviously, the, the spherical planet nature obviously makes this... People cite um, Galaxy, Mario... Mm -hmm. Actually, of course, for this, even though technically Sonic, you know, SA2, Sonic kind of did this first. But, um, you know, like things like that, where you land on a small planet and you have to destroy all the enemies before you can progress. I believe they did that a few times in Galaxy. I think so. Yeah, I yeah. I, I remember, I, I think Smoothies brought it up once. She was like, there's a, there's a um, Galaxy in Galaxy where like, you have to do that a lot. <sighs> it's been so long since I've played them, and I'm pretty sure. Also, this kind of goes back to what we were talking to with feeling unsure about jumps, but... Oh, God, this level. One thing about the homing attack, um, which is sometimes if you get caught in a, in a chain of homing attacks, if there's one... Because sometimes you like you, you enter into a chain, and even if you aren't touching the, um, the jump button, you'll still start attacking enemies. And sometimes, if there's one in the, in the middle of nowhere, like, like <laughs> over a bottom of this pit, the game's just like, well... Sucks to be you, dude, and you just get killed. I gotta say, that transition made no fucking sense. <laughs> these these sections make no sense, man. It's just like... <laughs> Sonic jumped up three feet. Now he's all the way over here. Well, it's like, clearly gravity is not a thing on the Lost Hex. Fair point. Also, fuck that monkey. Stupid coconuts. I don't think you can destroy them, either. I've never bothered enough to experiment, but... Ugh. It's weird, because... Again, they, they had that in colors. They're those um, flying bandits where like, you have to home and attack to get across. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why does an Eggman just make all these robots like that? So that can't be destroyed. That, that, an that idiot. metal is very, very rare and hard to uh, mine, Gareth. So so he used it just on, on idiotic monkey robots <laughs> that throw coconuts. Yeah. 
not his super powerful, you know, death egg robot. Yeah. Where would you use him? <laughs> I'd, I'd use him on a knife and fork. That way he'd never be broken. Ah, fair point. Also, I must get all red rings. Just not on cam. Now, red rings unlock the uh, super de duper emeralds, don't they? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be getting to that in the last part. <laughs> you sound so happy about it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd say for my money, this, 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 I'm looking at this and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, this reminds me of a Mario level. Like, this reminds me of something of, like, if someone took a level from Mario World and rendered it in 3D. Like, all oh, the water in the background, you know, the little island with the grass on the very top. This just looks very Mario-ish to me. I said this when we played Lost World at your house last, but this level really makes me think Kirby with how just flat it is. Obviously, it's mm. faster paced and more sloped, but if this was straightened out, I think it'd fit right in the Kirby atmosphere. I, I don't know. I can see this. Yeah, I can, well, I, I can see either, you know, uh, Mario or Kirby. Either way, it's, you know, a, a Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> no, again, it's, um, I have to look into this before we record the next part, but I remember there was rumors that people from Nintendo actually worked on this. Were those ever proven right or wrong? Um, we talked about this in the first part. And my answer is still, I forgot to look into it. <laughs> well then, part four, we will have the answer. <laughs> at or some point. will we? Hmm. <laughs> Pro probably not. Gotta keep him coming back. Alright, so, Master Zick is the master of fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you He's could have been the master of... of knives or machine guns, but he chose fruit. He's the master of fruit and jumping very highly away into different other small planetoids. So here's what I was talking about with... Oh, wait, never mind. I was going to say, if that planet wasn't there, I wouldn't have had any options. Is, is there a way you can un do uh, it and then like move around the Sonic? I don't think so. I think once you're in rocket mode, you're stuck. Once you go rocket, you never go <laughs> brocket. Wow. Shut up. <laughs> I'll be here all week. My, my mad lyrical skills. Thank God. Stay away. <laughs> so this is definitely a boss fight. Um, uh, yeah. As said before, Take that, like asshole. The worst, these are like the worst boss fights in Sonic history. <laughs> this this pathetically easy. Maybe that's why Master Zick isn't the master. He sucks so bad they just kind of said, New Roar, it's Savic. Yeah, well, he's the only one who's puts up a halfway decent boss fight. Everyone else just, like, <laughs> stands there while you kill them. My favorite. Oh, is this the one where he has his mad, his mad lyrical skills? There it is. Yeah. The vice of mine. Eggman loves to rhyme in this <laughs> cutscene. For way, <laughs> never designed. When uh, Chris recorded the um, cutscenes for me and he sent them over to me, and he, he named this one Eggman's like mad rhymes. I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> so I watched. It's like he does rhyme like four times in a sentence. It's amazing. In terms of the character animation of Lost, how do you feel the cutscenes hold up to other games? Um. Hmm. Facial animations don't match, say, Unleashed, which to me is still the best, but mm. I, I do like it. Everything just feels very static. Like, there's not much action. It's just kind of like a sitcom. Yeah, and like, the, the camera was pretty much always stay stationary. The one cutscene that really did pretty well was the Desert Ruins ones they showed at Boom, where Sonic's like jumping around and everything, and everything's kind of going to shit. It's like stuff actually happens in that one. Yeah, you know, and it's the, just kind of that one cutscene. <laughs> well, the opening's pretty sweet. Oh well, yeah, but that's that's different. I never liked Eggman saying "man up tails." I love Just it. See, like, I love it. Eggman, Eggman's a feminist. He wouldn't use that word. He wouldn't say that phrase. He, he had a lapse. He's very, very upset. <laughs> only, only the Zeti could make Eggman turn on his feminist <laughs> ways. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining us through the tropical uh, coast. We'll be back in part four with um, the ice level. Okay, bye. The ice level. <laughs> Man up, Tails.